Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. London-listed Rand Gold Resources is weathering the Cote d'Ivoire storm remarkably well, with the company remaining on track to produce more than a quarter million gold ounces at the Tongan mine. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer is in the studio to tell us more. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Shannon. Why is this mine such a great achievement for Rand Gold Resources? You know, it would be an achievement in uh, the normal course of events, uh, just to go out and discover something from scratch, you know, in, in, in the Ivory Coast, the northern part of the territory, and to then so quickly extract nearly a quarter of a million ounces from that is a remarkable achievement. But to do it while there's civil war mm. going on there and while there are terrible hostilities, uh, you know, is it, just remarkable. And this is uh, the story of Dr. Mark Brister, you know, a great South African geologist. We don't have the David Livingstons anymore. We have mm. the geologists going up, making their discoveries. And he's a, an expert at discovery and development. And, you know, I've been up at his Marley mines. Mm. Uh, the people uh, actually ululate in favor of Dr. Mark Bristow. And when you say to them, why are you singing praises to Dr. Mark Bristow? And I've been right at those mines in Lula and also Marilla to see it happening. You know, they say, you know, in days gone by, we, what we used to earn in a year, we're now earning in a month. And that is because of uh, the activities that have has been brought here by Rand Gold Resources. So very popular. I think uh, as these hostilities are ending in the Ivory Coast, we'll probably, you know, hear that they're singing good tunes mm. for, for Dr. Mark Bristow again. But to go through uh, this period uh, and to still uh, produce the plan is, is amazing. And he's lo uh, London listed and the, the market actually punished him because they wouldn't believe what he was saying. You know, he was saying, we're going to continue here, we're going to produce the plan. Nobody believed him because all you saw were announcements of Newcrest, the Australian company, you know, closing the mine, evacuating. And so in the face of all that, you know, his peers have been disappearing from the scene for fear of, uh, uh, you know, sort of attack and hostility. He <laughs> has not only continued there and they say, well, Africa is not for sissies. Uh, it, it certainly isn't. But, uh, you know, he's producing to plan. He's overcome the logistics, and um, I think it's a feather in the cap for South Africa. Now, speaking of overcoming things, what are the main as well as the biggest challenges that the company faces? Well, you know, he's in the north, so his logistics are south-dependent. Uh, there's been a lot of strife in the south, and it's uh, reaching a, a climax now, and it should be settled fairly soon. So what he cleverly did is he, he, he brought in his supplies from Mali where he's active. So, so that gave it a, a curved ball approach. And, mm. uh, you know, the, the, the near mine community want him to continue. That is the thing. He's become untouchable. And even during the period of um, harsh conflict in the area, he used to call together leaders from both factions and he used to show them what he was doing. And he would say to them, look, whoever gets into power here, you're going to benefit from these taxes. Mm. But better still, it's the near mine community that, that benefit from jobs, the near mine community that uh, benefit from enterprises that supply the mine. And they put up a shield, a barrier, you know, against its hostility. Uh, and that's the greatest protection. Now, what is the future outlook for the company in Africa generally? You know, it's been fantastic. We saw him go uh, up in the mid-90s uh, to, to Mali. There was hardly any gold activity there. He camped out in a shack and borrowed someone's tractor and he dug some trenches and he discovered Marilla. You know, Marilla became the gorilla. That was the company builder for them. It's now uh, depleting, but he then discovered uh, Lula. And again, I say it's this mantra of discovery and development mm. where you see very few people doing that. They buy other people's discoveries. He follows it through. And um, he developed Lulo, and he's got many projects in the Mali area. Now he's got Tongon, which is developing and producing in, in, in Ivory Coast. And he, for a long time, he wouldn't go near the Democratic Republic of Congo because he was always conscious of his, his political risk. He then assessed the political risk, and he said, now is the time to go in. And even the hostile east, he went in. And you can see the progress that he's making. I mean, he's going to come out with this Kabali uh, mine, uh, and uh, which is going to be phenomenal. You know, it's going to be as big as some of our mines on the Woodwaters Rand here. And he's got a very good uh, partner in um, uh, Anglo Gold uh, Ashanti. Mm -hmm. 
which is partnering with SA, he has lowered his risk, but you can see the relationships that he has with the government and the people nearby, the, the, the philosophy that he has that all stakeholders must benefit from this operation, otherwise you risk your security. Mm. So he floats all boats when he goes in, and that is his biggest success. The governments like him because he pays them a lot of tax. The people like him because he gives them jobs. Business likes him because he, they can sell services to him. So everybody is winning. And you can see when you, you go into uh, occasions there with them how popular he is. You know, he's almost um, uh, like a politician that, that, uh, that um, people favor. And no, he's a business politician, but he realizes mm. that you've got to do a lot of good for the area, for the people. And then that does a lot of good for your company. And I just hope that um, you know the London Stock Exchange stopped punishing him because mm. he's been telling the truth all the time. But it's been so incredulous they haven't believed him. I think they should now uh, make sure that um, you know those shares go up again from from where they uh, dropped to because they were doing pretty well. And uh, I'm sure that um, we will see an uptick in that share price. Well, we wish him all the best. Thanks for your time, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Shannon. That's the show for today. Join us again next time for more news and insights into what's happening in the mining world. For 30 years, Crema Media's engineering news has delivered unmatched insight into South Africa's real economy. Subscribe now and go to engineeringnews.co.za for the real economy in real time. Engineering news, not just for engineers.